once again to State of Talk with Staters of Ireland. I'm Ryan Turner. I'm Jonathan Milligan. <laughs> and this evening, folks, we, uh, we have in the room with us our very good and talented friend, Mr. Percy Robinson from County Donegal here. Yeah. You're very welcome, Percy. Um, happy to be here. Brilliant. 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 Percy, you're one of the, you're one of the, the, the early, early players of our country. <laughs> um, and, and, and I mean that in a very, in a very nice way, but yeah. um, you, you've, been, you've been around a wee while. I don't know what you're going to say there or not, but it took a while to get the right word for it. <laughs> Yes, legends, legends, I would say. I was one. Well, the ones was uh, the before me. There was only a few, but Basil Hendricks was the big boy in Ireland. Yeah. You know, the Englishman yeah. that yeah. played a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, but I, I was pretty early in there. Uh, even though the funny thing, the first thing that actually kicked me off to want to play the pedal steel was that Crosby Stills, Nash and Young thing. Teach your children. Oh, Teach yeah. your children well. And there was pedal steel and then it was actually uh, great song too, yeah. uh, Jerry Garcia out of the Grateful Dead that uh, that uh, played on that. It's a very unique style because uh, even at that time I was playing in pop band and stuff. I always liked country a bit, but I was never really into country that much. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that question. Yeah. Uh, we, you weren't obviously, and you just said, but you just answered the question. But it's, yeah. uh, it, it was it was different. But then your your style uh, isn't just pure traditional either. It's like kind of contemporary at times, isn't it? Well, in a way, because uh, then in that band, I was in a pop band. I remember there was a few songs in the charts that was pedal steel used on, uh, and the, then but the. There, there again, getting back to you, that was the thing I heard playing pedal steel. It was a different thing going to get one. Because no shops had pedal steel back then, yeah. and there's no internet to, to Google something yeah. back then. Of course, of course. So yeah. uh, I finally uh, think I rang McCullough and, Piggott, uh, McCullough and Piggott in Dublin, and uh, that's where they had one in stock, one called Aroda Sound, or made in England. Yes, I remember them. They'd the, yeah. the done strings. Uh, but then they must have marketed these pedal steels and they were very crudely made. I don't want to condemn them too much, but they were great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing was, I, uh, I served my time as a motor mechanic and uh, I could um, enter the mechanical side of it, which was good yeah. about the pedal steel. Which is important. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. I remember one time I was in America and I said to this boy, I served my time. I meant to say as a motor mechanic, but he ran back from me. If I remember, mean, served the time as a convict in <laughs> prison. I'm not used to that thing over there. <laughs> yeah. So when we got the 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 you got search, the road sound. The road sound. Do you uh, remember the year? No, I said I'm not good at that. The year, I haven't a clue really. But Are we talking seventies? Yeah, it must have been seventies. Yeah. yeah. Early seventies. Yeah, born nineteen forty-eight to fifty-eight, sixty-eight. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I tried to play that. And funny, there was only one old person I knew played the pedal steel, and he was called Stanley McCook from, from Derry, yeah. Stroke, London Derry. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he was really a Hawaiian player, but he, he was a great man. He made his own pedal steel, and he'd done a great job because he worked in a place where the uh, lathes were working at wood and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And he made his own, and he gave me this book. Uh, uh, pedal steel, I can't remember the one now. Anyway, I took it away and I was so dedicated back then. And a few weeks I came back to him and I could nearly play this stuff and he couldn't believe it because he had this book for years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But he, he was more into Hawaiian music. Of course. And that's what kicked me off for the pedal steel, you yeah. know. Sadly, Stanley uh, is deceased now. Yeah. Uh, uh, am I right in saying, did he give you his guitar, Percy? Yes, his wife gave me the guitar, actually two guitars that yeah. he'd made. Yeah. Uh, but he was left handed. He was. That's right. And one of the steels, he made this thing at the back. He took the the motherboard or whatever, the electronics out of a, a Yamaha keyboard. And whatever way he done it, they're all inside it. And he had a thing along here that when he went up and down, it would trigger the sounds of this keyboard. Wow. Way back there, you know, it's just great. Almost like a, for the want of better words, like a MIDI pickup MIDI or something. Pick like, yeah, you yeah. have a synth. And, 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 and you're going back quite some time now, Percy. Exactly. It's very clever. Very he clever. was a clever man. He was a clever guy. Yeah, he was yeah. a clever guy. I remember, Percy, you come, uh, originally you come from, from Greenan yeah. in, in Burt, yeah. uh, here in Donegal, and it's a very, very beautiful place. And you're, 
you're very high up there in Greenham, uh, yeah. and uh, I'm familiar where your where your where your home farm is. But I I, I worked in a band with with another guy for who was a neighbour of yours, Stephen right. McBurdy. Oh yes, Stephen yes. And uh, I remember Stephen telling me some years back when we'd have been having steel chats on the, on the way home from gigs, and he says he remembers. He says you know when he was young, uh, uh, when on a on a on a really relaxed summer's evening. He says at their place, and they weren't all that far from you, maybe no. a mile or a couple of miles, yeah. most. And he says you could hear Danny Boy being played oh. on a pedal steel guitar. And he says uh, he has great memories. And he says he still, still, he still hears that in his head to this Boy. day. Yeah. And that was Percy Robinson right, yeah. uh, playing. And that's that's probably well, it's definitely the seventies, I think. From yeah, yeah, uh, wonderful yeah. thing. Why pedal steel? Was, well, it was, was just, it just uh, that song that triggered? Uh, that song, uh, there's something about it. But then before that, I was playing with that band and they would do a few Buck Owen songs. And I would, I actually made a B bender for the Telecaster that I had. Sure. To, yeah. to, to recreate that, get near to the pedal steel effect. Yeah. yeah. And uh, using, uh, I can't remember if I used a violin pedal or used a, a finger on the violin control of the, uh, the guitar, but I could get that. So I was working towards that even before I got the steel with the yeah, with the sure. guitar. The bends. And so uh, so <laughs> I had that notion in my head, and then you were uh, a bit of a Clarence White then, were you? Well, I mean, he was uh, he had the, the before, but uh, I had worked out a, a, a palm lever. I made a palm lever ah, yeah. to get the uh, they use uh, the strap button to to, to make the the bend. Sure. But I was using made a palm lever, and uh, it worked all right. Yeah, of course. But, uh, but then when I got the pedal steel, I didn't, I didn't use it. Well, there are, there are palm, palm benders available now, I think. Yeah, the there is. That's there great. Is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. You were well advanced, Eric. Yeah, I was, I was way ahead, supposing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you were. Percy, after your rotor sound, what was the next, what was the next move? The, the next one then was the Emmons twin neck that Oh, he stole it. Yeah, I didn't steal it. But anyway. <laughs> the thing was, the guitar I had to get. Yeah. And an arm I have to mention too, because I was bought from this place in Medstone, Kent, the steel mill, yeah. and a boy called Eric Snowball. Snowball. Yeah, yeah. And I rang up about this pedal steel, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 decided to buy it. And Jim Conway, who had uh, bands around. Uh, there, you know, right. uh, yeah. Hollywood stars and different bands, and he was going over, and uh, I said, "Couldn't go over along with him." And fair play to him, we were playing maybe Manchester on a Friday night, and it, we drove down to London afterwards, <coughs> and all of them going on to B and B. It me and him got into the van, went down to Maidstone, Kent, Tarek Snowball, Tarek Snowball, and got the Emmons. The collector's beautiful D ten. Exactly. Yeah. Bolt on, um, which I, which I am, I, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm delighted to own that guitar now. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful guitar, and it's a funny thing. Um, I, my interest in, in steel, I, I, with going to Nashville, it was only when I came back from Nashville, I think, in about 2017, after being to see Mike Johnson mm. and sitting listening to this incredible tone, I thought to myself, I says, man, I got to get that. Guitar and, and an amp like that, and I'm going to sound like Mike Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the only the only guy that I knew in Ireland that that had a D10 push pull at uh, uh, that uh, Emmons that time was you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, uh, and I went down to see you, and we talked about it for a few weeks, and eventually you gave in to mm -hmm. selling me the guitar. Well, I, I didn't use it; it was sitting away yeah. in, in a case. So. Yeah. Uh, I thought after all these years, uh, if you're interested in it, why not? Yeah, it's yeah. a great guitar. I love that guitar. And, uh, like like these, you have a thing about push pulls in general, Percy. Sure you do. We've well, had this conversation. I mean, I'm not. A, a, I, I play the pedal steel, but not so many other steel players know all the different brands, know all the different new gadgets and everything. Where I just play. So I was lucky enough to get this one from Ted Nesbitt. <laughs> Who we, yeah, we, we interviewed Ted yeah. Yeah, previous, yeah. Well, fair play to Ted, because I mean, at least now, even yet, there's no place to stock pedal steel no. so much. No. no, no. So, but the first steel I think I got from Ted was the Bennett, the, that made me wrong Bennett. Well, yeah, yeah. I still got it. And, uh, but when I got it, it was a very short scale. So I extended the nut, or the, the, the machine heads here, and put a showboat 
fretboard to make it the same action as a showboard. You'd probably put it up to 24 and a quarter, would that be right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the thing was then, uh, and that's all pulled. Of course. And it sounded all right. Yeah. But then I got this one. I was always looking, one like this, because I've seen photographs of Bud Evans playing the black one like this. Yes, of course. Yeah. And then he, just lucky he had this one here, single neck. Yeah. So I bought it off him. And then, I mean, I was still playing the twin neck at that time for anything important. But then I got this one, and this is much easier to travel around yeah, easy and everything. Yeah. So, and then to me, I just got used to this. And then when I would go to any other pedal steel, especially all pole, they just didn't sound to me the same. No, you know? no. yeah, yeah. You, you have. You have a very unique tone in any case. Mm. Um, I haven't heard anybody else to sound like Percy Robinson. No. There's so many Maybe steel players. <laughs> there's so, there, there's so many steel players uh, that you, that you can compare, and and but certainly there's no other Percy Robinsons out there. And for me, I think that's a wonderful thing because all the great memories we have of music, Johnny Cash and bands that stands out, they all had a sound of their own. And mm. you, as a musician, as a steel player, you've got mm. a tone of your own. Well, is that down to? And I'm going to get around to that. You don't use finger picks. No, this is a nails, and it's, it's grand. I mean, at the start, I had a problem with nails; they would break or whatever. If I keep them well polished, now I seem to have no problem with them. Was there a reason behind you not using picks, Percy? Was it was it a case that you just thought that it was played with nails, or why 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 was that? Well, when I started playing the pedal steel. I was also, already started to play the guitar with a six string guitar with my nails. Okay. So I got used to that, and then when I went to the steel, I tried to use finger picks, but I found it really awkward. And then I could play pretty well because even I was playing slide and everything on the electric guitar, the yeah. six string guitar. So if, and to mute the strings is always a problem when people start playing any slide thing. Yeah. Because these strings are ringing on, you don't want to ring on. So then I thought, oh, I'll just play with my nails. Okay. So I, and then I just played with my nails. I, I give up trying. And the problem is, I know a pick, with a thumb pick, you can get great definition and edge to the bassier strings, which I would find a bit more hard to get with a thumb. But still, no, I kept it. Works. Kept it works. It's great. It works. Yeah. And that's what I meant at the start. That, that your tone, your, your tone is so unique. Uh, yeah. You know, definitely so so great. That's great in all the al albums you would have worked on some Irish acts over mm. the years, uh, and you'd always have remarked that that has to be Percy. Percy. Just be your ear. Well, yeah. 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 it's great, great, great playing. Even at the festival uh, in Dublin, at the, yeah, at, you at the stick out there. a lot of people, really a lot of people always. I do hear people saying, oh, "Hasn't Percy got such a great tone?" But you're you're a great believer, and something you pointed out to me a few years ago when we're. It was a different conversation. It was Telecaster talk, and when we were talking about old tellies when you were doing some work for me, you, you something you did say at the time, up in your place where you plugged in an old telly straight onto an old twin reverb amp, and it just sounded so good. Yeah. And you, something you, you said to me, Leo Fender had it right, and uh, you were right. But you know, you're very much a believer in that you love your old valve amps. Yeah. And um, you love your push pull, and and you have that <coughs> unique. Through sound. Well, I just I was lucky enough to get that old uh, early sixties twin reverb, and I've, I did put a fifteen inch RCF speaker in it, and that combination of that and this to me, uh, I wouldn't want for better. Sounds you know? incredible. Uh, it really sounds incredible. incredible. Yeah. yeah, sounds incredible, Percy. Uh, no, it's good. Uh, there's, there's, Percy, you've had a remarkable career as a musician and as a pedal steel player. Um, and, and, and maybe not so much in the Irish uh, dance circuit as such, but, but regarding session work and, and television work, um, when television was important, mm. it's, you know, uh, going back to the 80s when there weren't, you were there in a lot of those big shows. Yeah, there was. Back in Crystal Hill and John Prine and. Uh, well, that was an album that I played Nancy on. Griffiths. Yeah. And, uh, I done TV work with Nancy Griffiths. Uh, and then there was the session series. And the first series we recorded in RT Studios. The second was in the Point Devil, as it was known then. That's right. Now it's the Three Arena, I think. That was uh, with the great Philip Donnelly. The Philip Donnelly, he was the uh, producer or the MD for that. Yeah. And the first series in RT Studios, like Nancy Griffiths and 
I, I, I lost so many people. Then the second one, it was like Don Everly and Brilliant, yeah. uh, uh, Kai by Jack Clements. That's right. Uh, uh, and uh, Lyle Lovett. Uh, and we were lucky enough to be in the band back in all these folk. And it was a great band. Uh, mm -hmm. And for anybody that would like to see, I think those sessions are, are, are viewable on YouTube. Yeah, right? some, yeah. yeah, some of them are there. And my and my green push pulls there. She's there. <laughs> She's <Yeah>. there. <laughs> uh, and funny enough, that you know uh, Roy Heap, who's a great man yeah. in England, who had the magazine. He still has it online. Yeah. Still guitar magazine. Yeah, Roy, yeah. That's the first time they ever seen me playing. It was in the sessions thing. It was televised at that time. That's series. And he got in contact with me, and he done an article with me years ago in that magazine. Fabulous. He asked me, you know, yeah. the things. And then uh, I would do not make other sessions. I've done. I done a weird one one time for this a famous boy. At the time, I didn't even know. I chose how the contact I was with. The, what's really happening in the world was Terence Trent Darby. Did you ever hear? Of I, I haven't. No. No. Never. No. I've heard the name now. Well, he, he was a big artist. Uh, it hits a number one album in America and Japan. Wow. Yeah. And he recorded this album at One Million Studios in Dublin. And they rang me up to see if I could do a session on the Saturday. Say this was the Wednesday or something. I never heard of him before. I mean, even though he's so successful, he's a bit like yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I don't know, but Saturday because I have to look after the children on Saturday. <laughs> and that, I think it was actually John Prime's wife, who she worked in one million <coughs> at that time. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. and she says, well, this boy's pretty. You know, you should make an effort, maybe. And they were willing to send a roadie down to collect me. And then he got to bring me up. Wow! But then I, I decided I would, I would make that effort, so I went up there, and he was actually staying in a big country house outside Slane. Yes. And uh, a big drive up to it, and uh, but anyway, I was up there in the studio and played in the track. That album was called Neither Flesh Nor Fish, because he was a vegetarian. Wow! Yeah, yeah. very good. Uh, and uh, and then he said, they said to me, you can't. We can't book you into the hotel because it's booked out. Would you mind staying in the house where he is staying, you know? Yeah. And I thought it'd be like a council house or something somewhere <laughs> in Dublin. It was this mansion at Slane. Wow, wow. Brilliant. So I would drove back there and uh, cook whatever you want to eat and everything. Uh, wow. just a different Amazing memories. Uh, yeah. 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 Like. Moving back even a bit further, Percy, um, you know, you you you, you you got you started out your Rota sound and then you got your Emmons, but in that period of the seventies, um, you know, were, were, who were you working with in the line of on the road with bands? Yeah. And well, I played with the Cotton Old Boys for, I always tell people, for about nine months. And then I played with Gloria in Mississippi, the band yeah. she had, yeah. Yeah. For, for about nine months. And did, did you replace Jerry Madigan in the Cotton Old Yes, Boys? I placed Jerry. Right. He, he lives now in Canada. He does, that's right. Yeah. And I've done sessions for him over the internet, you know. Very good. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I always say to people, that these two bands I played with, I was taking nine months with each one of them roughly, it was like being a pregnancy and then going out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so that was the Cotton Old Boys and then Gloria. I was going to say, yeah. was the player yeah. again. <laughs> I, I can't remember which band was first. Yeah. But either. And one way it was good, you know, because so many people get involved in them bands and they get a bit fed up and maybe. They don't really enjoy the music that much, but yep. they still keep there because of a mortgage or whatever, and they just and then they get into drinking too much or whatever. Of course. Which I then I after that I got into more contemporary bands and was playing with a band called Rule the Roost. They were sort of a, a rock uh, band, but we played uh, country. A great uh, band. Uh, yeah. Peter O'Hanlon, a uh, great guitar player. Great guitar player, yeah. Uh, and uh, my brother Billy played bass and a drummer from Von Cranor, Lawrence Doherty. Lawrence Doherty, yeah. And the lead singer was Hugo Blake. And we were actually happening at that time. Uh, we toured England and things, but at that time, punk music was happening and stuff. Sure. And that was just the time that Dire Straits were uh, uh, were out at the same time. And then Dire Straits, I'm not saying we were anyway the level that they were, but we're almost doing the same sort of music, yeah, country music and uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but more contemporary country, you know. Yeah, very good. But then uh, that band fell apart. Like so hard to keep a band together. Everybody's their own notion what to do. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. And it's, of course, going back to that time, Percy, uh, on like today, the roads was in terrible conditions and there was no motorways. No. And and uh, of course, even the, the the mode of transport itself yeah. was. Uh, 
vans and whatnot were it was a different different thing from now. A different uh, time. The only one thing I would say way back then in the early days, the show bands and things, there were so many venues around the country. There I mean every even Donny Gall made a 15, 20 custom built ballrooms. Yeah, so, yeah. so there were so many places you could play and you could do a circuit around Ireland. Whereas now the bands uh, they're playing Cork one night and they're playing up here the next night or something, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. At, at least you would be you would be staying over in hotels and travelling on to different venues to a certain extent. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But now the roads are a different world back then, yeah. Yeah. As part of your, your career playing to Percy, you worked with some and we just mentioned there, you know, we talked about the the sessions. Yeah. We previously talked about the sessions with Philip Donnelly and those great American artists. But you you've also worked with some of the, the, the big big Irish things. Well, yeah, I played on Paul Brady album. I think it's the one called Oh What a World. And the, the track, I, it's a great track I played on. It's just because I played on it, but it's called The Long Goodbye. Or maybe that was the art track. No, I, I, it might have been that one, but it's a really lovely track. Yeah. I was, he asked me to play it up to his house, and uh, he lives out past Donnybrook, a beautiful house, and then a, a big garden, and a lovely big house where there is a studio. Yeah, and a lovely man, I must say, he treated me really well. Yeah. Uh, and it was lovely to be included in that, because this type of man would get lots of different people to play on the track, sure. oh, and yeah. then decide what, what, what to use yeah. at the end of the day. He liked what you done. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, Mary Black yeah. album playing, and her stuff too. Uh, and... Uh, no, just, uh, well, Percy, you, you, you would have diverse to a, a Dobro at times as well, you would have recorded Dobro yeah. as well. Like, Dobro obviously is a sister of the steel guitar. Yes. Now, but mm. what, what about the Dobro? Do you do much with that now? Or? Well, the Dobro, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know why I got into the Dobro, but anyway, it was another, it took me a while to get into the Dobro, but uh, yeah. uh, I play with this local group called The Men Who Knew Too Much. Oh. And I play Dobro with them just because it's more acoustic band. Yeah. And that's a great thing with Dobro. You just lift it and away you go, you know, with a pedal steel set it up and amplifiers yeah. and things. That's right. So, and, and I'm unusual in a way because I use a G6 on the Dobro. Oh, right, yeah. And the good thing about that, it's almost, it's, it's this tune. That's another tune. Yeah, but. That tune in there. And so I can, with that G6, I can uh, almost play some of the same things with the pedals down and the wow. guitar, yeah. which is really good. So you play G6 in the Dobro? Yeah. yeah. And, and if you don't mind me saying, but you play D9th uh, yeah. on the pedal steel? Yeah, the weird one. Oh, it's, D9th. Not, it's not E9th, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a sad it was Artie McLenn, I think, done that. Right. The great Artie McLenn, yeah. who's a great guitar player and pedal steel, played with Brian Call, and then he played with everybody from Van Morrison. Yeah, he did. That, you know. yeah. And he used a or, or, or uh, the D, and for some reason or other, I thought it'd be good too. Because if you're playing an A, then you can play down here, you know. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas if more people were playing an A, uh, they'd have to play with the twelfth fret if they want to use the pedals. That is correct. Yeah, you've got yeah where you've got it, yeah. So. Uh, and that's another yeah. weird thing about yeah. me. No, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Hawaiian music is a is a something that, that I've I've heard you play. Yeah. Uh, is it is it is it a favorite or is it well, amongst the? I, I don't know how I got into that. It's weird. I mean, I, it's weird me because I came from playing soul music, rock music, and every sort of thing, yeah. and then the country. But then I, I go almost to the edges of the country a bit, a bit, because yeah. I play a Hawaiian stuff. You do, yeah. You, you know, play, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's a lovely melodic music. It's a different it? feel, like you yeah. feel free to. I mean, to just a yeah. Yeah. You're in Hawaii. Yeah. You have yeah. your grass yeah. skirts on, you know. <laughs> yeah. that, that sixth you know, really, thing, you know. Yeah, class. Yeah. Yeah. I, love, I love that to myself, yeah. Because yeah. uh, then I do that one, uh, Yellow Roses. And I, I'm weird because I, I could do that just with the pedals down. The whole tune. The whole tune. Yeah, do you want to feel free well, to I'll do yeah, it? Yeah, play a little bit here. Oh, sorry. Get it. Get that harmonica. Let 
that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, lovely. Really and it's very relaxed, isn't it? Yeah. Now yeah. most people like it. It's melodic and yeah. there's some, and especially if I was doing any music and there were any, uh, there's a friend of mine who's a one, professional one surfer in England called Peter Hart, and he brings out videos of I know how to uh, do different moves in the pedal or not the pedal steel, the, the one surfer, yeah. and I had made up some. Hawaiian type of music, and they have the track in my album. That one is called One Day Dream. This sort of thing. And uh, do you write this stuff yourself? Yeah, Percy? yeah. Brilliant. It was by chance he wanted something, and then I, th I thought I'll, I'll work on it, and uh, they had it. And uh, when you watch. The, the sea or anything with that Hawaiian music, the waves and everything, it just sort of it works. It works. Right. Uh, yeah. If you have a new album out, yeah. plug here now. Yeah. Licks <laughs> from <laughs> the Sticks. Licks from the Sticks. That was Sean awesome. McCarran, the sax player, giving me the name for that. And Brilliant. I wrote it, and there was nothing else called Brilliant. that. No. But you done a, over lockdown, you done a video, was it Make You Feel My Love? Yeah. That, that got a huge amount of hits. Look I know, it was very lucky. Look it up. Yeah, because yeah. it's great. Make you feel my love, and it's a great song. And that's Bob on Dylan the album song. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, it's fantastic. Really I good. could, I played on, uh, uh, Mary Black recorded that uh, version oh, of it, and I played brilliant. on it. Uh, brilliant song. Brilliant. No, I love that song, and uh, the lyrics are just great. And I was really lucky. Uh, I got thirty thousand hits or something, yeah, or yeah, views yeah, or whatever. Is, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. And the son, <laughs> fun he. Uh, he, uh, his day job is music therapy and he does a lot of stuff like like uh, yeah. videos and yeah. things. Yeah. So he fair play to me, video, video, did a video of it for me. Very good. He even Very had his dog in it. I think I've seen the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's yeah. brilliant. It's really yeah. good. And the playing on it is lovely. It's really good. Yeah. It's just and and great. again, you, Percy, you're along with your statement, but you're 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 one of the and, and have been for years. You're one of the recognised engineers, recording engineers here in Ireland, and yeah. you've produced some. Unbelievable records, and it's a bit like the it's a bit like the steel thing. Really, you were playing steel when there weren't very many doing it all together. But you were also recording when there weren't very many people recording, yeah. particularly in this and this end of yeah, Ireland. And yeah. and there's a few other. It was just because uh, people I, I don't think well you had to go to Dublin to record years yeah. ago. Uh, trend or whatever. Eamon Andrews Studios. I remember going up with the Rascals. To record in Eamon Andrews studio, yeah. it was a big day going up there. I would say that. You yeah. know, it was like go to the end of the world and yeah. uh, record. But then I started, yeah. I started to do a bit more session work in studios and then I decided to get a small setup for myself and one thing led to another. And, mm -hmm. to, and at that time, pirate radio stations took off and a lot of local artists and bands could get played in local radios or radio stations. Yeah. So then there was a bit of market for people to record, yeah. and that's, that's that's how that started up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you done you done a lot of recording, and yes. for me, growing up as a young lad, it's like Jonathan pointed out earlier. Um, when you when we were listening to Period Radio, which yeah. we, that's what that's that's what we all listen to. But every second song, you know, you you, you probably recorded. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and you could tell it was you your distinct sound. Yeah, so much, so much, so much. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. even Brian. Call recorded stuff. Yeah. I just listened to it recently and it's, it, it, it turned out really good, yeah. you know. And what a singer Brian Call was. Oh, he was great. He was, he was. Yeah. And, and, and again, Percy, you were going back to that era of recording when, when it was all real. Yeah. Where there was real drummers, real bass players, mm -hmm. real musicians. Um, you analog, know. yeah. Great analog studios. Analog and four track. I started off with four track. Yeah. <laughs> and so there was no uh, sitting around doing takes after taking and uh, then spend days to decide what take to use. Yeah, you know, it was not that. No. no, it was the early days of it uh, in a way. And to me it was far better. I'm not into this thing of doing 20 takes or something. No, I know. Uh, but I know everybody's the wrong one. Yeah. Mm -hmm.